Okay, we'll call this pulling local energy part two. What I've done is I've pulled the sec exciter out of the circuit. I've moved my probes over here out of the way. I'll even scoot that exciter over. We still have the basic connection methodology here. We have the L3 off of the first tap of the tower coil into a 400 picofarad. We have our tower, the top hat off of the bottom of the tower coil. We come into an AV plug. Uh, the bottom AV plug is the same. It's going into this ground connection. In fact, let me go ahead and just move it over to this ground connection so that no one thinks this is a phony phony ground. And what I want to what I want to show you is that we have removed the exciter and we're down to strictly a parametric circuit. We have our ferrites, we have a diode, a choke, a 400 picofarad, L3, our tower, and of course our two AV plugs. And so now we need to back off here, take a look and see, strangely enough again, no batteries, <laughs> ground connection, the L3, this little parametric amplifier, it's not an amplifier, I stand corrected, this is a parametric oscillator, and we have signal here, we have very little signal here, and as I keep probing it, I should get the signal to, to increase, no, I'm not able to. Now I've killed the whole oscillation, so I'll touch this diode and hopefully set it into oscillation again, which I did. You see what I did was just put my fingers across that diode, which was enough signal from my body to set this parametric oscillation we have going on here, which is driving the L3 and causing the coherence. And here again, since I played with it, well, let's come back now again. It'll drift in and out because that diode's fairly sensitive to temperature. And now you see we did at one time have a little signal there, but back up here, and we had good signal there. Okay, go back down here. Yeah, let's see if we can't adjust that diode a bit. Okay, there. That's not half bad. And a pretty good signal here. And if we look over here at the input to this AV plug, we have signal. Let's look at the ground connection itself. Interestingly enough, we have signal on this end of the ground connection. Let's go over here and see if we have signal. And lo and behold, we do not. You can see that there's no signal there at all. Come back over here again, and there you can see the LED off of that alligator clip. And back up here again. Okay, what I'm trying to prove here is that the old masters 50 to 100 years ago did not have this proprietary transistor that everybody is so concerned about. It's not necessary. If you have a way of rectifying current via diode, uh, via a piece of stone and a piece of metal, if you can rectify a current and properly adjust your system, you can go into a parametric oscillation and cause coherence. And what I'm wondering about is if the old masters weren't indeed actually doing exactly the same thing as what I'm demonstrating here.